Um, I just started recording on a normal okay. call, so work session, so I just figured I'd record it. But if you guys want to live stream, tell me, and I'd be more than happy to. I don't think that's necessary unless other people disagree. Perfect. I don't either. All right. Uh, then uh, for this work session, this is March 15th, uh, and this is a work session, we can uh, continue our conversation regarding uh, staffing needs. We had last, in our last one, we had fleshed out what we felt the responsibilities for a planning zoning clerk and a clerk of council would be. We still had to flesh out what we believe the responsibility of a code enforcement officer is. Uh, that was the last stage before we went to mesh it all together to, to, you know, look at what it would look like on a, on a set of bodies, right? How we would organize those responsibilities into, I don't know what I would call an FTE or a, you know, a, a full-time or a part-time person. Do we want to do that? Or I think at the last council meeting, somebody had brought up another item that they had wanted to discuss in a work session, but I didn't I didn't note what that was. I just remember that that was something that came up. Did anybody recall what that was? I don't, I don't remember one way or the other. <laughs> All right, well then, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we can go on and talk about a code enforcement officer uh, and what we believe those responsibilities would be. Um, Right, a hold on a second here. Let me start taking. Isn't there a, a job description already for the code enforcement officer? Yes, probably. So if, if you if you happen to have that handy, that might be a good place for this discussion to start. I I don't have it handy. Let me see if I spent. I'm not. Yeah, I would keep talking. Because yeah. I am not even logged in, so it's going right. to... But yes, we have everybody's job descriptions in a file. Right. All right. So here. So I, why don't I start the discussion, right? So I would, I would say that I would expect one of the duties to be regular um, visual inspection of the village for uh, in residential and commercial areas. Right, I would say that uh, following up on uh, uh, planning and zoning permits for compliance. Right, and that would be both during the during the project and after the project. Well, aren't we starting to get overlap into what we had described as the? Uh, no, I. Uh, I believe, so this is what I'm talking about Part of the is permitting field. process was I think right, right. was. Right, I'm talking about in the field. So I wouldn't expect the planning and zoning clerk to go into the field, right? Okay. So part of, part of a regular complaint is that we hear is people don't think that we have anybody that goes out and eyeballs the post holes for fences, right? I would expect that that is a job for a planning and zone or a so like code a enforcement on site, officer. The on site inspections? Right. That's what I'm suggesting. Right. And then lastly, I would think that, uh, um, I don't know how I want to say it just yet, but something along the lines, uh, you know, that they would be responsible for, um, code enforcement violation, uh, citations, and follow-up. Code violation, what do we, we call, are those citations when we have a code violation? I don't even know I what they're called. I, I don't know. Well, my God. <laughs> I found it. Violations, violations are fine. Code violation. Code violation, uh, write-ups, and follow-up. Right, and those those are what I would call, in my opinion, the three the three chief duties of a code enforcement officer. Right, but now um, I think we'd 
also had discussed visitation, not just inspection, but visitation of commercial areas, right? Where they are going and having conversation with uh, the shop owners. Does anybody else have anything that they would want to add to that? I would say that's part of your visual patrol and inspection of the village. I think it's a subset, but I think that we would want to call it out specifically. Yeah, just so they know that just driving by the place and saying, yep, everything looks fine is not enough. Non-compliance warning letter. Joe, you got you getting the non-compliance warning letters? That's from Columbus. You're, You're on mute, Joe. Joe. All right. <laughs> Joe, were you trying to unmute so you could actually say something or? Still muted. We can't hear you, Joe. No, you're, Joe, you are, you are muted. Sorry about that. That's all right. And so what were you saying? Well, I was saying while well, the way Columbus operates, they have uh, code enforcement officers and then, uh, you know, whether it's something they see in their routine travels or whether it's a complaint, they go out and then, you know, they issue a, uh, a uh, warning a citation. They follow it up with a warning letter. You get a citation and then a warning letter or a warning letter and then a citation? Well, I don't have one, but I mean, that's what they do. They issue a citation on the spot mm. All right, yeah so so citation that goes in was the system a, and then they follow it up with a letter and so then it's a compliance follow-up operation okay fair enough we, so that's how we might was, be able to simplify it or do it quicker than they do well i i think that just noting that the expectation is that they are the ones responsible for writing up whatever violation citations and following up is, is enough. I don't know that I expect us to write the process that they would follow, right? I, I don't think that's what we are doing right now, but if other people disagree, we can, we can talk about that. Wow, that's a... I don't think no, I was just showing an example. Details. It is a it is the uh, code enforcement officer that does that, and they issue an order. I don't know if they call it a citation or an order, but then they do it by parcel number. Okay. Yeah, you, you have a lot of you have a lot going on on your face there, Tony. You're like you got a lot to say. <laughs> well, now's, now's your chance. <laughs> My face is thinking out loud. I'm, I'm <laughs> You know, I think the, the job description for the code. I like, uh, I like that expression of steel going forward. I, I found the job out. description. I'm glad you found it before me. Because well, I think you sent it to us back in May, I think. Okay. I found it from a an old email. So. I did May 4th? Yeah, so May something, yeah. Got it. I literally, you know, it's upside down. I apologize, but my internet just, just went wonky. So yeah. I did not hear what you were saying, uh, Tony. Well, I, I didn't say much because I was trying to listen to what you're wonky, what you were trying to say. Uh, yeah, I wasn't saying well, anything. I was, that was just me being yeah. quiet. We all stopped to watch you go. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah. That's it was like watching the Matrix. <laughs> well, I, I think the, the, code enforcement officer is pretty cut and dry. I mean, they're going to see the, uh, you know, like you had said, the follow-up, writing the citation, going out in the field and observing. I mean, the three things that you described, I think is it in a nutshell. I know that in the past, I mean, code enforcement officers had to go to, you know, planning and zoning meetings and stuff like that and 
And I'm not looking for our code enforcement officer to do that, I don't think. You know, that's always been something, if there's something comes up that the code enforcement officer feels that, you know, the codes aren't, aren't adequate or there's some things lacking, maybe that could be put in as a description as in their job description is, I don't know, uh, report inadequacies in code or however you want to do. Suggestion box. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think all, and that's one of those things that, you know, different code enforcement officers interpret things differently. You know, one person may not have a, one officer may not have a problem with the, the code and others may. I mean, so I can't think of anything else though to include on their description. You're muted, Brian. What I'm capturing from that is uh, what you're proposing is as a duty or responsibility that they would consult with planning and the planning and zoning commission on the quality of existing code and potential gaps. Yeah, there you go. Something right. like that. When, when needed, I think Tony said, I, whether we yeah. want to put that in there or not. Well, yeah, I mean, I would imagine that would be at their own discretion or at the request of planning and zoning, right? You don't, you don't consult on, uh, yeah. If someone has a concern. Well, they're getting <laughs> right. paid it, by it, the it, hour. They're going to want to get paid to go to a meeting. I don't know. Uh, okay. So what other, does anyone else have any additional thoughts on Planning or uh, pardon me, code enforcement duties, code enforcement officer duties. I hope I, you know, I may have heard something incorrectly a minute ago, but uh, the code enforcement officers aren't really uh, qualified to inspect, say, uh, construction projects for compliance to specifications. That's a, a whole separate thing, just to make that clear. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Hi, you got to be certified by the state to do building inspections of any type. Right. Okay, so with, with that, so again, my thought was just on the permits that we issue. And I think the, the permits that we issue is like fence. Do we issue any other permits that we are the, because I don't think the, the county comes and inspects fences for us. No, I mean, decks, right. decks or something and sheds get need permits. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if those need inspections though. Sheds well, over so, 200 square feet are, are considered accessory structures that the, right. the county inspects. But so the county inspects sheds over 200 square feet yep. and the county inspects decks, right? Correct. If they're we, over. County if, doesn't do decks. That's 200 square, square feet. feet. That's pretty yeah. big. Decks are done if they're attached to the structure. There's a, there's a, a distinction there. Right. Attached to the structure or over wow, so many yeah. inches high, 30, right? Yeah, 30 or 36 inches tall, I believe, the last time we talked about it. Correct. That's yeah. Right. right. So, so can we go over that? It's 200 square feet or more and it's attached or unattached. So sheds are, are accessory structure that they are inspected. Over 200 square foot is required. Okay. Building department. We inspect things, think of it as a zoning inspection. So we simply make sure people put them in the right places per the code. A, they're allowed to have it. B, it's in the right place on the ground of the yard, right? It's not in the front yard, it's in the backyard. As an example, it's not too close to your neighbors, it's within the setbacks. It's typically what we are looking at from a zoning standpoint. Well, I'm unclear and, about one thing, 200 square feet is pretty big. Correct. So That's what there's we start no permit in. required for these smaller sheds? Like no, the, no uh, they have to file a permit. It's just oh, okay. whether or not the building department gets involved over 200 square feet. Okay, I understand. Thank you. So back to the originally voiced concern. It, ooh, a code enforcement officer would be... Uh, qualified to do the zoning, the kind of zoning inspection that we are talking about. Things are placed where they need to be placed and they have appropriate permission to build what they're building. Right? I, yeah, I think so. Right, so Joe is the one who'd 
voice the concern. Joe, Joe, is your concern alleviated now that now that we've clarified? Uh, well, I didn't have a concern. I did want the clarification because the, the built, you know, construction inspection is a whole different matter. Okay, that sounds like that has been handled. Anybody else have anything more uh, to add to uh, to add to this list of duties? <laughs> All right, well, that was pretty quick. Uh, so uh, let's read those down again. And while I'm at it, I'll read down what we had for the planning and zoning clerk and the clerk of council. Um, so we have for code enforcement officer, uh, regular visual inspection of uh, residential and commercial areas. Uh, Uh, the code violation uh, write-ups and follow-up, visitation of commercial areas, um, consult with planning and zoning on uh, code quality and gaps. And then also uh, it was uh, field, uh, field review for and follow-up on the zoning permits right so that was for the code enforcement officer uh, for a planning and zoning clerk uh, they are to coordinate uh, the permit process uh, answer questions in the office uh, do administrative work for planning and zoning uh, conduct offline research for planning and zoning and prepare minutes for planning and zoning. And then for a clerk of council, uh, we, I had captured, prepare the council minutes, prepare legislation, uh, and be available for offline research uh, for council. So that was what we had captured in our conversations regarding those three roles. So now the, the next phase of this conversation, as I imagine it, is how do we see this fitting into, into people, right? So we have responsibilities and we had started this conversation, but before we had duties, right? And before we were talking about, well, uh, potentially a planning and zoning clerk and a code enforcement officer or one person, or, uh, you know, this could be three part-time people or so my thought on this would be, I think that a planning and zoning clerk and a clerk of council could be one person, right? But that a code enforcement officer is a different set of skills uh, and is a different person. So I, I think we're looking at adding two, two bodies to the village employee to be able to serve all of this need. Although when you say that, it's really already adding one body because traditionally we have a code enforcement. True, true, true. Yeah, we have a code enforcement officer. No, 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 right. no, it would be adding, adding one new position. Right, or so right, it feels to me like this is one full-time position or potentially two part-time, I guess is how I would roll that back a little bit. Is Lisa just a part-time? She's full-time. She's full time. She's full time. You have to have somebody in the office to answer the phone and the doors at least all day. Right. So they're, yeah. And you can't expect the part time mayor, and nobody is, but she's there because other than that, we would have a part time office hours. So in order to have full time office hours for people to come in um, for whatever their needs are, whether it be uh, picking up something, dropping off something, whatever. Um, and, and of course, answering the phone. I mean, Yes, you have a full-time person that answers the phone, answers the door, and does pretty much all of the other stuff at this time. I have a question. <clears throat> if we combine these two roles and the clerk uh, for the council was the same uh, as the clerk for planning and zoning, one's in the chief executive branch of government, the other's in the legislative. So the question would be, who would be the person's boss? 
I would presume the mayor, but. Well, I think the mayor is the boss of all the employees of the village, right? They, you know, their duties are their duties. And I guess I would imagine the mayor would have the ability to set priorities for this person, but you know, that's, that's how that would be. That's at least how I see it. Right. No matter, no matter what, even if we had a standalone person, a separate body doing the clerk of council, they would still report to the mayor. Right. Ultimately. So I don't that know how sense. that would change. I don't know how that would change the potential conflict. Well, I don't know that it'd be a conflict. It would be uh, if people in the council like us <laughs> started asking for things, then it would be a question of what are they, what's incumbent on them to do. Yeah, I, I think I would trust that people are grownups and if a person is being overloaded, uh, they can express their concern, right? That's. Yeah, I'm just clarifying it. You know, the employee might say, well, who do I, <laughs> I'm being asked by five people to do something. What do I do? Yeah, no, I, I also think that maybe that we might need to, you know, if that would become a problem, we might need to set procedures in place that those requests are funneled through the mayor, but she has a person to do the work. Right now, she doesn't necessarily have a person to do that work, right? The, the people that she has currently are already well laden with duties and responsibilities. Well, I see the need. I am in agreement. Well, right? it sounds to me like the, the debate, because I haven't heard what anybody else is, uh, you know, feels about the skill sets, you know, not being compatible between the planning and zoning clerk and the code enforcement officer. I'd like to hear what the other members sure. of think about, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see why the, that there isn't a person that could do both of those jobs. I, I don't see the difference. And I, I'm going to, and I'd like to hear whatever, you know, I, right. I hear, I've heard Brian. I'd like to hear what other people have to say on that. <laughs> Please. Uh, the only thing I was going to say, Tony, is I think the con, uh, and, and maybe I took this wrong, but the comment is there's a different skill set, maybe, and and I don't want to say a code enforcement, a code enforcement officer makes pretty good money. Um, I, I think on our payroll, they make, you know, in, in the real world, $20, $22 an hour, $21 an hour, $18, something around that range. So I think when you start talking about paying somebody an hour or two to write down meeting minutes, you're paying somebody $22 an hour to write down meeting minutes. So I, I, and so to me, it's more of a, to you guys, it may be a little bit different, but if we have them doing all of this mm, littler well, I, things. I get some back to, back to, are we talking about having two part-time employees, a, a part-time? No, I think we're talking about if we don't, I mean, if, if you merged them together as one, you would be paying a code enforcement officer to do meeting minutes potentially and all of the above. And I'm, I think that would be the only comment that I would make is, you know, to me, whether we have one or two, um, the skill set is just a little bit, and I don't want to say different. It's just, yeah, you're going to be paying somebody to do meeting minutes. Well, I, I would think that the clerk would, uh, if we have a clerk, that that would take that on. And back to my right. example, here's one from the city of Columbus. So there's an order issued by the uh, code. We have all officer. those forms already, Joe. Those are all. No, I'm not. I'm not talking about the. Form. I'm just saying the procedure is that a code enforcement officer would write an order or citation, whatever it is you want to call it. But all these letters, these follow-up letters, the non-compliance stuff, would the code enforcement officer be doing their own non-compliance letters, or would the clerk do that? That's my question. That's why I think the con <laughs> that that position needs to be combined. I I hear what you're saying about. You know, paying them. Uh, well, it's what's just part of the job. No, I, yeah. Minimum wage is going to be fifteen bucks soon. I'm not sure. No, <laughs> no. And again, Tony, I'm not in. I'm not in disagreement. I think that there's always going to be things that you do in a job that you may not be that you're paying somebody. I mean, it's just like our the the way it currently is. I mean, we pay our administrator X amount of dollars, and there's some days that it's just minimal. So, you know, I'm not. I'm just pointing that out. I just think the skills that you could. To do meeting minutes and things like that, you could literally hire somebody to do it um, and pay them twenty dollars per meeting or something along those lines. Is what was one of the conversations that you guys had before? 
So I think that's kind of where the conversation has gone, you know, this way, this way, this way. It's just well, a matter of- We're just talking about one thing, minutes of the meeting, which if, if that doesn't work- well, no, you've Kevin, said legislation. No, right. he has also said legislation and, you know, the, the planning and zoning clerk is going to do the agendas and they're going to do different things like that. So again, it's just a matter of determining, is it going to be one person or two? And which way do you want to do it? Right. So, so why don't we, uh, unless there, I think that since you, Mayor Hughes, would be the one ultimately, you know, responsible for these people's day ins, day outs, and you've been a part of the conversation that we've dreamed up what we believe the duties are to get the duties for a, as we've described them, for a planning and zoning clerk and a clerk of council and a code enforcement officer, as we've described it in this conversation, what do you think the body count is that, what, what would you like to see and why? Trust me, I, I can go back and forth just like you guys are going to. Um, I see the downfall to it being if one person's out, um, then that's gonna leave who to do it. Let's just assume they go on vacation for a week or they're out sick for two weeks. Now we're down a code enforcement officer, we're down a planning and zoning clerk and how do you get caught back up when you're two weeks down? Now currently we are doing it, but again, as these permits and things like that start coming in in the spring, that's going to be a little bit harder to catch up than it ever has been in the past. You guys have seen some of the Facebook complaints that we're already getting for, you know, it taking more than seven days to get a permit. So to go back to yours, um, having one person does make me a little nervous because if they don't last, finding a person that is, um, I have had people prefer full time. So it would be, I don't know that I would necessarily do exactly all of the things. For example, um, I do most of the legislation. Kim does her legislation. The only legislation that they would ever touch is your guys' legislation, um, something like, which most of those have to go through Gene anyways once you get done, but like even the sidewalks, I mean, Eric pretty much does it. So I'm not sure, and I don't wanna say I would trust this person to do legislation. I just think it's easier just to do it um, because we, I, I don't know. I just feel like trying to track somebody down. That's why I was glad you were talking about a person inside the building versus like a independent contractor to do meeting minutes outside of the thing. Like, yeah. I don't think that, I, like that was not what I envisioned. I don't envision trying to track somebody down that is not an actual in-house, in-person thing. Um, a full-time person is gonna get benefits. So you've got to weigh that cost benefit to it. Um, Having one versus two, having two people, again, I just feel like in this in the situations that we have faced over the last year, two years, having one person out kills us. And when you've got, it's a matter of, if we could have one full-time person that just showed up to work every day, that'd be great. But you can't guarantee that. Or again, you don't know if they're gonna last three months or six months in code enforcement. And code enforcement is killing us right now. You know, what I'm hearing here is you got a choice between do you want to worry about having someone there or having backup, or do you want to be constantly looking for part time employees? Well, you know, that's to me, that's where the rub's at. No, that, I think you know, if, you're, if you're having two part time people that come and go, you right. know, again, I, I'm you know, no, so I, I, I don't know. Tony, uh, I think you're not hearing me. My take on this is that creating a full-time position would be more likely to keep somebody around. And, and that's my hope. Stick. That, well... That would, uh, uh, Tony, I, don't, I think you're missing what I'm trying to say. I think, and, and this isn't a topic for right now. Um, this is going to be a topic for later. But having one person full-time makes me nervous that if they leave, you're back in the same boat. At least you would have a backup person. But in the same sense, I do feel like you could potentially get some better quality people for a full-time job with benefits. So, you're, so you're, I don't know that you're hearing it both ways. Two people is always better than one if one person's sick. I am hearing it for, and that's, I guess, for that's clarity. And this is the rub. It's like, what for, do you want? Yeah, which way do you clear, want? Yeah. yeah, for clarity's sake, when you say one person, are you saying packing all three of these Correct. sets of duties into one FTE? Okay. Because my, my concern well, with- I would, I would say that, that Lisa start being the clerk of or clerk of council. Well, if, that if, would the, probably if the clerk were to do the follow up, for example, when the code enforcement officer flags something or writes an order or citation, then it goes in the system. 
if the clerk were the one that does all the follow up on the non compliance, you know, uh, mail, then the two jobs wouldn't be dependent on each other. If, if you had a period of time in between code enforcement officers, the compliance part would still be operating. But it's kind of a clerk job to do all that paperwork, wouldn't you think? So I, yes, but so I think that the the underarching or overarching or I don't know the the thread that we have here is that one of the recurring issues that we have with retaining a code enforcement officer is as we have operated a code enforcement officer, and I think really as we've written these duties down today, there's not quite, um, there's not enough work for a full-time position, right? That's the, and so because we've run it as a part-time position, it is one that people don't stay at because, you know, they do this for a while and they find somewhere else that's a greener pasture with benefits or more money or what have you. So part of the idea would be if we could make it a full-time position, it might be more attractive and retain a qualified person longer. Right, um, that's just to make sure that Tony understands, or not Tony, Joe was up on what was being said there. Tony, and I would, I also would agree with her doing, Lisa doing, let me, administrative assistant doing clerk, of counsel, she does 90% of that and she's confident and comfortable doing that. Um, so to me, that that is the logical, you know, I think the only difficult part is of course the meeting minutes and it's just time consuming, but it is something to do in your downtime when there's when the phone's not really ringing that much and all of that. So it's not the end of the world. If, if we could get the... That's why I'd say if you had, if Lisa was doing the clerk of counsel and then we had you know, paid someone to do the minutes for Lisa's sake, you know, well, and then that's why I think minutes for planning and zoning could be very simple. I think that needs if to be you're done at the meeting. I think that that needs to be done by either the chair, the co-chair or one of the non-voting members. That's oh, my right. opinion. That's, a, that's another thing that needs to be brought up at the next tomorrow night. Or I do. I believe that that Wednesday should be done night. by somebody there. Yeah. They take five minutes. Court reporters have an excellent skill set to take minutes. Yeah, I, I used to do it in a PTA meeting. It's not difficult to do it while you're talking and you walk out the door and they're done. Um, so, but I, I agree with you. I think that Lisa needs to be clerk of council or I have no problem with her being clerk of council, but that means we've got to get rid of the planning and zoning. Clerk of planning and zoning, clerk of zoning, planning zone, right. whatever it's called. One's got to go, one or the other. And I like the Maybe idea of her doing the council other, stuff. Anybody else, you know, council? Yeah. Diane, uh, we haven't heard anything from you yet in this uh, today. Anything to add? Um, I know you've got an opinion. <laughs> oh, I always have an opinion. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> always have an opinion. Um, although code enforcement is not something I, I know much about except from listening to you guys talk about it. But um, I think that uh, I still think it's uh, a fine idea to have take a little load off of. I just think in terms of doing the meeting minutes for the council meetings and then maybe doing a little gopher work if uh, research work, or in the case of, of uh, our council president, if he uh, wanted to have uh, this uh, clerk of council summarize some of his notes from meetings like this particularly where there's a follow-up and, and it would be nice to have them display, that'd be something else a person could do. But they would be a contract worker and they would have so many hours a month and like, like was originally described. So totally separate thing. So I think that, I think that would be a, a backup person for, I think it would be a good person and the person then backs up. Uh, Lisa has a little bit less to worry about if another project comes down the pike and she gets uh, overwhelmed. That's my opinion on that. It's not a big deal. I mean, Lisa can do it. I just, I just always thought it was a good idea. So that's one. And then number two on the code enforcement. And this is just, it's, it's a management thing. It's all, it's all uh, your preferences and how you manage people, kind of people you like to work with and hire. It really is up to the 
uh, it's really up to the, the mayor who happens to be the manager to do something which is most comfortable for her. If it was me, I would look for a full-time person who is um, doing administrative work in the office that's, a, um, that's code related, um, planning and zoning related. And then I would, but I would have the, an internal administrative code enforcement manager type or whatever you want to call it. And that person actually would make sure it's all getting done. So instead of the mayor having to do that, the, the manager is, is making sure the permits are coming in, the answers are going out, the paperwork, they may be doing it or they may be asking for help to do it during the swamp, but they're, they're the traffic cop in the whole process. And um, where they can go out and inspect something they do, but we would have additional people in the park perhaps volunteers, uh, some of our residents who know construction, someone who maybe likes to inspect fences, someone who maybe likes to inspect that, that's, wouldn't mind doing that as a, as a volunteer activity or for some nominal fee per inspection. Uh, she, he or she, the uh, administrator, code enforcement administrator would call on them and say, hey, I got an inspection for you. Can you go see them in the next two days? And there would be maybe four or five people in the village who would be delighted to share their expertise on a as needed basis for some nominal fee or as a volunteer. And I would have just have the manager manage those people who then would do a lot of the offsite work. And then you're as manager- about completely, as, Something completely different here, Diane, is what I'm taking from this is that you- <laughs> Did yeah, I'm saying how you asked me my opinion. That's how I would, if I was running it, that's how I, I think, do it. Okay, maybe let me, let me, <laughs> let me rephrase my question is that, do you, or to, and this goes to, to David and Mark that haven't chimed in yet, and Joe even, should we have two part-time people or, or combine the planning and zoning and the code? I don't think it doesn't matter. It's, it's all about what the manager wants to manage. And that manager, the, the person that does the hiring, <laughs> the person that does the hiring, it has to have 51% of the vote on how this is done. You can't force, it's stupid to force, uh, you have to have a full-time or you have to have two part-time people. That's foolish to enforce that on, on the person that's managing the hiring and firing. That person has to be able to uh, uh, execute uh, on this, get the people in, get people that are, and, and, and so it, that it's not, I don't want to be the one to one of the people to vote that, oh, you so you're going to abstain now. <laughs> you have to abstain oh. from this. No, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with what the mayor wants to do. That uh, I'm going to vote the way the mayor feels most comfortable that she can actually execute on, on the job descriptions that have been put forth here. All right. I have a question for the mayor. Yes. Uh, the minute an order or citation is issued by a code enforcement officer, that immediately exposes the recipient to either civil or criminal prosecution. That's what the uh, Columbus puts in every one of their notices. Noncompliance may expose you to civil or civil or criminal prosecution. So there's a chain of custody whole thing in there. But the mayor handles traffic court all the time. So there may be uh, do, do we have a separate clerk for uh, court? We, we have mayor's court, and that will be Leah who manages that. And that is for, it's not just for traffic. We do, in fact, bring in code enforcement violations to mayor's court. So I right. think the answer to your question is yes. We do bring yeah. them in. So I'm just pointing that out. So here's, here's how I'm going to say this. Um, this topic was taken over by you guys to discuss. Um, and, and Diane, I appreciate that because I think at the end, I kind of got what you were saying, that you would approve whatever I requested as far as full-time, part-time, all of that. Um, I don't know if everybody agrees with you. And I think that's the concern that I have is council, I don't get to fully make that decision. Um, council has to approve that decision. So if I request to have and, and again, I appreciated the fact that you guys did do that for me for um, our fiscal officer and um, the clerk of courts and doing some of the things that I wanted to do because I feel like it is working, it's working for me and I love the way that all of that stuff is. 
Um, we are having a very difficult time finding somebody that is qualified to be a code enforcement officer. That has not changed as of today. We found a person that we believe that was really qualified, but honestly, she just turned down the job due to other circumstances. We do have another person that we are that we have reached out to um, that has, we have plenty of people that want the job, nobody that's qualified. And what I mean by qualified is has never done it before, um, has never, you know, potentially read a bunch of codes or nothing. I mean, it is going to be teaching basically me code enforcement. So um, that's where we still are. We have, we have advertised the job. We have indeeded it to death. We have reached out to other places. Um, and uh, so, yes, we have people that are willing to try the job out. Um, but that's currently, we know that this is an issue that we've had in the past. I don't know if it's worth trying a full-time person. I guess we still, two full-time or two part-time, one, one full-time, none of that matters. We can't find one person that's qualified to do this job that is willing to do this job yet. And we have been looking since October. But it's been advertised as a part-time job. Correct. No, absolutely. So if, you know, I think that is part of the problem. I don't think it's really a want, I, you know, in a perfect world. Yeah, I could tell you what I want. I mean, but because I do, here's how I'm going to say this. You would have to, in order for me to think that we would merge, we would have to merge a part-time code enforcement with something in order to make it a full-time job because I don't believe there is enough work for them to do in October, November, December, when there are no permits, when there's none of that kind of stuff going on, there's no high grass, there's no nothing. Now, if you had them doing a lot of the zoning codes and working on some of that stuff in off season, I would be totally for it. I think that a full-time person would be amazing. And I think we could potentially get some, some other people. Um, I, you know, again, I think benefits is, is, is one of those things that's going to help pull in some people. But if you actually pull it up on a couple different websites, I think a lot of people will be surprised at how much a good code enforcement officer costs. If, um, if I may, I know I haven't been particularly vocal here. I, I am of the opinion largely of um, Councilperson Shrimp that staffing is minimally our decision, but I would, I, I am in favor of the idea of a full-time code enforcement officer maybe drawing a higher, um, how do I say, caliber of individual to the job. Um, um, <laughs> however, I, I, I would also be in support of the idea that, you know, what the day-to-day -day people need is what we should be giving them because they're the ones who are doing it. Um, none of us spend as much time at the building as um, Mayor Hughes does. And what needs, you know, what needs are noted there should be obviously the primary consideration. Um, I, I would assume we could financially swing another full-time position. Um, as we were discussing about 20, 25 minutes ago, I guess hammering out what their specific role is would be the, the hard part at this point, but I, I don't know. Those are, those are my thoughts. This is not something that I will claim to have any expertise in, but there's that. I, I would say one other thing, if Tiffany, if you, I haven't seen your ads, but, um, that's something that I have a lot of experience in is posting ads and drawing people in that normally wouldn't be. If you want to look at, if you want me to look at your ads to see if there's a way to phrase them so that you might get a person who's, uh, you could phrase it so that it seems like it's a full-time job, but it might be a part-time job. You might be able to get some more people fishing into your pond uh, that way if you if you phrase it uh, a little bit differently than just saying oh it's part time job or you know it's a full time job because if you if your problem is that the last three those three months of the year I mean that there there might be somebody out there there could be someone out there that would would be willing to uh, furlough for those three months there's somebody who might be willing to uh, if you let them, if they were hourly, not salary, but uh, if you 
let them float their hours along. Uh, they basically are full time, but I mean, there's there's some because frankly there are some times of the year when they are really really busy, like maybe the three months in the summer, for example. Um, so there might be someone that's willing to negotiate. If you say you're willing to negotiate hours, you know, uh, they might be willing to talk to you versus just skipping over your job altogether. So it's well, just. And I, I do. I feel like there's quite a bit of stuff that they could potentially do as long as everybody was okay with them doing, you know, again, we have how many permit issues that we continue to come up with. And, um, you know, we didn't even know we had the chicken permit thing until I found it. And again, the code enforcement officer is the one that put all that. I would assume the code enforcement officer and Becky put it together. So we found all that stuff um, that was in fact done. And it was just a matter of, again, for us to locate it, but we didn't know where to look because they were gone. Um, so I do believe that there's plenty of things for them to do, but it may not be code enforcement. It may be more planning and zoning. So I, I think that would be the biggest way to say that. And as long as everybody was okay with that, um, <clears throat> I, mean, I would be fine with it. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, I don't believe we need too many people. I mean, once you start getting into, we already saw, Diana, we already saw all of the, um, financials of where we're going to be a couple of years from now. And that makes me nervous doing, you know, thinking that we could just hire two or three new people to, you know, to, um, you know, th th that, that, that is where David, I just wanted to correct what, what David was saying that we don't have much involvement in staffing. I would, I wouldn't phrase it that way because, you know, when, if you want to, anytime you want a new position, I'm going to be pushing back on that. I agree. Because I know that. a lot of our residents just, you know, I still remember hearing a lot of them think we're already quote overstaffed. I mean, people have unrealistic expectations about the staffing, but but the fact is, is that that is one of those hot buttons. You know, or they've added another employee. Oh my gosh, you know, our taxes da, 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 and it starts starts the whole ball rolling. So I don't mean to say I, I don't care if we're adding a brand new position. I do care about that very much. Well. I have a question uh, for you, Mayor Hughes. If we're talking about a person that, and we have need for a person that, that does clerk duties for the court, then there's administrative uh, duties for, uh, for the chief executive, which is you. Then we're talking about uh, a code enforcement officer. Then there's all this compliance paperwork afterward, which is clerk type of uh, work. And then we're talking about zoning and planning. Wouldn't it make more sense if we were to combine these things so that uh, Leah would have uh, an assistant and that person could, you know, serve in all these functions. Well, I think that's minute, kind of minute, minute writing also. Right. I think that's kind of where Tony was going with it. Is it better to have, you know, mm -hmm. that's why he's asking, is it better to have two part-time people or one full-time person? And I think that really ultimately is back to the same thing because Diane, I, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Yes. In, in one in one sentence I heard, I'm going to push back if you want an additional person, but in the same sense, you said it's up to the administration. I need to tell you guys kind of what I want. So, you know, I kind of see that as going two different ways. So I have the ability to ask for it, but I may not be given. That's what I think this, uh, this meeting um, well, at the end I of the think, day. No, I, I, for me, uh, let, let me clarify further is that I, I expect, I don't expect you to come to say, I need another person. I would expect you to come say another person because of this. And by the way, uh, I've already checked with Kim, and uh, this is what it would make the finances look like, and this is what it'll cost us at the end of the year, yada, yada. Then I can make it then, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable, but just coming in and saying I need another person, and that doesn't. Right, and, and I guess I'm going to throw back to you guys. This is your guys' conversation, not mine. In a perfect world, having at least a full-time person would be great. I'm going to tell you, I don't know, looking at the finances that we had not too long ago, it doesn't make me that excited about paying an insurance and all of that, but that doesn't help our situation right now. So I, I go back to the same thing. This wasn't my conversation that we started. This was your guys's. Um, so, you know, if you guys are willing to pay a full-time person with benefits and all of that, would it help? Yeah, it's definitely going to help. But at the end of the day, I'm not the person asking for it. I'm telling you, we are having a difficult time finding a code enforcement officer. I will tell you that if I don't have somebody by, I do have somebody that's interested 
that doesn't necessarily have the qualifications, but I believe would um, do everything, everything he possibly, he lives in the village. Um, if he would still be interested in the job, I would reach out to him and at least find out if he has interest in at least temporary um, until we found somebody else that at least can write letters and drive around the village and do that kind of stuff. I mean, that's literally where I'm at. Um, finding, you know, finding good people out there right now has been very difficult. I, I'm, I, I have my theories as to why, and it doesn't matter. It's been difficult. So I'm going to go back to this, your guys's conversation. You guys are the ones that can change, um, this to a full-time position. If that's what you believe that we should have, I would take a full-time person with benefits clearly, because I think that that opens up the pool. Um, am I asking for it? No. Um, I, at this point in time, I mean, a part-time code enforcement officer is what we've gotten, what we've done. It's not been working in the past. I don't, it's not going to work any better now today. Um, but we also have to look at the village finances. And I saw the village finances the other day, and I already saw that Kim was nervous on some of the things. And that's without doing the things that we want to do. Um, that's without things coming up here and there. So I'm just going to say that, you know, you're a full-time person is going to cost you another $30,000 a year or maybe more. I have a question. If the full-time person were to be a person, you know, with uh, expertise and, and qualifications along the clerk area, and they were to be a full-time employee uh, through the mayor's office, then would, would they not have plenty to do on a full-time basis? There is so much stuff that can be done in there. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, that would make more sense to me to have a full-time person there. Right. And, and I think it's still going to back try down and make to that. a full-time job out of the code enforcement. Right. It's just a matter of, it, it's going to cost the village quite a bit more money. I mean, you are, I, I, well, yes, there's, there's plenty to do. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, if residents again, were asking me about it, I, a full-time person with all that there is to do in your office would, would be quite justifiable or more justifiable, it seems to me, than to try and stretch a code enforcement officer's job. Here's how I'm going to say this. I don't know that any of us can know what is going to happen over the next six months. We have taken over 250 new houses with more complaints, more um, and I'm saying more residents coming in to complain, um, obviously violations, uh, we see them every day. I had somebody email me today about some, some violations that, you know, that she's concerned about. We get them all the time. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know how many permits we're going to have. We know that there's 250 new houses. I mean, obviously it's going to be a lot more and a lot more work. And that's what happens when you take over a whole nother neighborhood. I mean, we've essentially in, inherited a whole new neighborhood. So to think that we're going to, we can continue to operate the way that we've been operating is difficult. But again, I, I also saw what our numbers look like. And that doesn't make me excited about trying to overextend ourselves. So I don't have a good answer for you. I mean, again, I go back to the same thing. A, a full-time person I think would be amazing. That's where I'm at too, as well. I think we could attract a better, higher quality pool that way, but I, I'm cognizant of finances as well. And that said, you guys are the ones that have to approve it. I can get you the legislation and do all of that, but if you guys aren't on board, then I'm going to continue to move forward and find the best person that we can for the village um, and continue to do exactly what we've been doing. I mean, yeah, in a perfect world, I would say, yeah, I want this, this, this. It's, it's not the perfect world, especially right now. We don't even know what the numbers are going to look like with COVID and all that stuff over the next year or last year. We still don't have those numbers. I'll just say I'd like to look into this a little more, but it would it certainly makes more sense to me that if we were adding a full-time person, that it would be uh, someone to handle the overload and the... Uh, uh, in you know the mayor's office and uh, through the administrative duties. And then the next question is, you know, what well, well the other part of it is there's a lot of legal stuff to issuing citations and orders and the follow-up. It's you know there's some criminal and civil liabilities to it, so there's some technicalities in that. So I I think where we're at now is to understand the financial impact of whatever route we may go, and so. The question would be, do we want to offload this to the finance committee to socialize that question with 
the fiscal officer and come back to council with that information? Or do we want to just from this work session, ask the mayor uh, to get with the fiscal officer to make that projection and then bring it back to us at a, at a future work session? And I have- It would no be nice to know what it costs. I mean, yeah. that, that sounds reasonable. Right. So why don't we, why don't we make that the takeaway, Mayor Hughes, if you could um, ask the fiscal officer to project what it would look like, um, you know, and I guess sort of, uh, you know, if we're, if we're just still sort of dreaming sort of both scenarios, right? Uh, a full-time, a full-time uh, code enforcement officer and, and another part-time person in the office to, to support these additional administrative tasks that we've we've dreamt up, or um, you know, all of those different full time code enforcement. We don't need anyone else. Um, I don't think we need a, a clerk of council and a full time code enforcement would do right. the, the cloak of the clerk of sure. planning because they're full time, so they have half their time doing stuff, half their time doing freight paperwork. And then can also do some of that other stuff to round out their day, knowing that in certain months they're going to be too busy doing out and about stuff to sort and they're going to sort of lose some of their other duties a bit and then have to pick up the slack once that's all over. If that's Diane, you're on mute. I think um, I just think if Kim's going to do the exercise. She should probably do a couple of different scenarios. Yeah. So, so we should just lay out what those people in and are. take them out and, and look at how the numbers change. Yeah. And you want Kim and I to. Well, Kim needs to, if, if you don't have time there and you oh, want. No, no, so no. Much, I was. I no, mean, if you want. Okay. So no, I was saying something. Do you want Kim and I to look at similar municipalities and see exactly what they are? and I can obviously get with a couple different for the actual pay for code enforcement officer. Do you guys want to have that discussion? Do you yeah. want me to base it on the current? I, I think range that, that we're uh, in? I think if you, um, it'd be nice to have uh, villages versus cities in terms of uh, trying to go for something or have a city compared to a village. So you know how much, if there, what the differences are, but um, that's kind of like the it's kind of like the uh, old village ad, the the village administrator versus the city administrator when we were having that discussion during the charter um, you know a village administrator is you know is not a hundred thousand dollars but but certainly some one right. and the heart is going to be closer to that so just be realistic from that point of view Right, but I think we also have to be realistic. And that's, again, that's why I'm not sure which way this is gonna work because being realistic about all of the people that we're competing with around here, why would you take this job over this job when it's- uh, Yeah, you'd probably take this job if it, if it was gonna be closer to home, if there was more flexibility, you might be wanting to be, uh, uh, you might be wanting a smaller environment rather than being one person in a big, you might like the fact that we're only uh, one square mile versus uh, traveling all over the place for a large city. There's lots of reasons to like this. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. You know, no, there are some good, not. you know, it's you not, can, but when you, again, this, when you already have a really small pool of people that you're trying to, and again, I just, I, I want to be realistic that when we start looking for a code enforcement officer, it's not going to pay $30,000 a year. A again, you can give as many benefits as you want, but most people can't live on, you know, X amount of dollars. So, you know, I already saw some of the code enforcement officer positions and they were as much as our, our, some of our highest paid people. And I don't know how we're going to compete with that, I guess, is where I'm going. So well, we're not, I, I, I think yeah, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not going to get those people. Exactly. No, but... So again, then we're, we're back to the same discussion. Your, your, your pool is so small that it, <clears throat> it's going to, it doesn't, time you're going to get better. I think at this point we could just look at the, um, the finances of it, we know what we're doing now doesn't work. Right. What we try might not work either, but we know what we're doing now doesn't work. So right. yeah, it puts you to where right. you have to just do it. Right. Right. My comment would be if, if uh, e even if we have to struggle some more with the uh, idea of a part-time uh, code enforcement officer, seems to me the majority of the work isn't what we're talking about in all these other clerical areas. Right. 
uh, that a full-time person would make more sense, you know, to be uh, doing all these other functions. Now, right. We could still try and deal with how to deal with the uh, code enforcement part of it. But once a citation or an order is issued, there's a massive amount of paperwork afterward. Right. So, no, it's, and all the follow-up work. Here's how I'm going to present this to Kim, and you guys can tell me if I'm if you don't want me to do it this way. But here's how I plan on presenting it for her: um, a part-time code enforcement officer, as is that that's not going to change. Um, but then hiring basically a zoning clerk per se um, mm -hmm. as also a part-time job. Simple as that. T up to 20 hours a week wouldn't be more than 20 hours a week. That's option number one. Option number two full-time code enforcement officer slash zoning officer um, or zoning clerk is how I would probably list it with benefits and have her run it that way. And then I will actually get with, do a little bit of research on what I believe a code enforcement officer is going to um, cost us. And with Kim, we'll kind of go through those numbers and then see see if we can kind of meet in the middle, get some numbers to you guys. That way you guys can, I'll, if she emails it to me, I'll just forward it to you guys. So you guys have it sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think she knows how to, I mean, she you want to look at it in terms of the financial statement, the financial balance. And uh, so we need to see, to see how that impacts. And right. then she may, based on that, she may be uh, we may be below where we need to be in terms of reserve and she may need to, if she, if she feels she needs to make recommendations of something that has to give, then she might uh, highlight or a couple things that maybe we would have to forego or reduce the amount we budgeted for in order to, to offset this ongoing cost. So, um, you know, those kinds of things we want to be able to talk about, talk that through. No, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have no problem. Is that exactly, is that, Brian, is that good? Kind that's, of what you're thinking? That's, that's what I had envisioned, yep. Perfect. That's how I'm going to ask her. Um, I don't, I mean, to be honest, I don't have a preference. I, I do think that it would be great to have Lisa just doing the other stuff and get the other stuff off of her. All right. Uh, then, then that brings us to the end of everything I had intended to discuss this evening. Uh, did anybody else have anything they wanted to bring up? This is going to be moment. very brief. Oh, okay. sorry, Mark, go ahead. We want to take a moment and talk about the two asphalt quiz, uh, quotes we got forwarded to us today. Oh, yeah. Eric, I forwarded them both, um, all of them, both of the quotes, the two quotes, the one from the MI guy um, that had done the path earlier. And then also mine was just some random. Actually, it wasn't. I got some recommendations from a resident in the village. Um, that's where the second quote came from. It was a recommendation from somebody that's used them, worked with them before. Um, so they aren't, you know, both of them, I believe would be good people. As you can see, there wasn't a huge price difference from either one. Um, so I think this is really a roundabout where it's going to run us because if you look at them, they are pretty similar. Um, there was no site map uh, uh, with the paperwork. Is this, is this it's where the new bridge the is? It, it's is this the walkway where the new bridge is? Yeah, this is literally replacing right in front of the community building. This is not an okay, addition. Okay. This is a complete rip out, tear, put back. What, Tony? I said in front of the park, not in front of the community building, but in front of the park. And the, I meant to say in front of the lake. Or the lake, yeah. In the between parking. the park and on the lake. Would it be cost effective to finish? Dam or not that part? Does it stop at like the bench down at the end? or? I have it. No, it's I right have in the it middle. Like, yeah. All the way would, to the path. Would it would it be more cost effective to finish the uh, walk path that includes the new bridge over the new spillway to, uh, along with the job? That's all brand new. That all that part is all perfect. We would actually be well. There's a lot of temporary the lighting and electric there. What's that? There's temporary lighting and electric there. On the new on the path that the MI put in across the uh, Earth Dam and the new spillway. There's no lighting. There's no electric over there. Well, they, they have some temporary high pressure sodium and mercury lights hanging on poles over there. Oh yeah, those. No, um, I thought you meant just actual 
So those that path is actually not that old. Um, and to me, it's in decently good shape. So our path would be, we would start exactly where they ended their path and we would go all the way down in front of the bench, all the way in front of all of the cars, all the way down to meet to the police officer lot. So that path going yeah, down that little hill would be done. Sidewalk out. What's that? Yeah, we just finished that whole sidewalk. Yeah. All of it. Uh, so oh, walk, call what you there's want. no plan to put pathway lighting in on, 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 as part of that. So, I no. mean, all of that would be up for debate. At this point, the only thing that I'm concerned about is getting mm -hmm. all of the, to get that flat, to make that safe for kids to be able to ride their bikes and wheelchairs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Make it a little bit thicker, then wider, thicker, wider. Um, make it a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. So um, you could actually have more than one person walk at a time through there because some of those are pretty thin. So that's kind of where that is. Um, we would well, have to do an appropriation. We'd have to get it all approved. I would love, um, and uh, in complete honesty, you, unless you guys tell me absolutely never gonna happen, I would love to whether or not we pick one, um, but I would love to at least start the first readings next week. Um, plan on next week having a crap ton of new legislation. Um, we have the new police cruiser coming. So we're gonna be selling the old one there's gonna be legislation for that. We already have a buyer for it. Um, meaning kind of like we did the last time we were given the estimate from the bidding place or whatever. Um, and we've already got somebody that's willing to pay it. Um, and then you're gonna to have to do like the paving assessment legislation. You're gonna have flow lines legislation. You're gonna have a whole bunch of legislation next week. So this is one that I would love to have first reading on next week. I have another question. Uh, the, there's repeated and constant complaints about the speeding going down there. And when people walk across what is the causeway between the two lakes is where the big complaint is, where people told me they've almost been hit. Does, does this new sidewalk, that this would incorporate some sort of solution to that, wouldn't it? The causeway between the two lakes. I don't know what you're talking well, about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're, the Lake pipe Road. goes underneath Minerva Lake Road to South mm -hmm. Lake from North Lake. In that area, when people are walking the speeders, I've had lots of complaints that people said they've almost been hit by people going really fast down there. And we that's been a discussion in our meetings before. <laughs> but wouldn't the new path was, uh, provide well, some relief to it's, that? It's not a new path. It's a replacement of a path that's already there. Right. I will say a lot of people do walk in the street around that particular area. And the only thing I can tell them is to walk on the path. And right now, maybe right. they're not walking on that, the path. That's my, path. that's my point. Yeah. It, it should get more people to walk on the path. But right now it's so wobbly jobbly that it's, it's a sprained ankle waiting to happen. So it might help get people onto the path. Well, that helps solve this other problem as well, is my mm -hmm. point. Why yes, it you? really might. Pick one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you guys, uh, Mark, it looks like you uh, you did actually look at them. Do you have any um, pros, cons, which one? Um, I think the one was a little more expensive, but it looks like they were doing two and a half inches of asphalt instead of just two inch. Okay. And it's my understanding that the thicker the roadway is, the longer it lasts. Okay. the better it is. I could be wrong with that, but that is my understanding. Okay. Uh, Mark, it has a lot to do with uh, what's underneath it. I think I saw in my the short time I had to look at that, that there was a gravel base underneath it. Is there not? Yes, there is a gravel there. base under well, that, that has a lot more to do with, you know, the uh, longevity of the asphalt. than. But with that being said, I'd go with the two and a half inch person if they're that. Yeah. For the base under. Oh, were yeah. they and were they both quoting the same extra wide, the seven? No, the, the the one gentleman for for MI was quoting a proper wide path. The other gentleman was quoting a slightly thinner path. Otherwise, had he quoted the one that was anywhere between five and seven feet, he probably would have been equal to the MI gentleman. They're mm -hmm. they're that close. I, I it's really an apples to apples comparison. <laughs> Now, Eric, can you answer one thing for me before, just just so everybody can have this? If we do it seven foot wide, that is going to require, correct me if I'm wrong, that is going to require some of those trees to come out. Is that correct? It, 
so this yeah, is what I'll yeah. say. We can do anywhere between five and eight feet. Okay. If you get above, we have to measure it. If you get above six, I think you're cutting at least one of those three trees, those little pines kind of trees that are up by the path as you go from west to east towards the uh, regular path. I think, you know, we'll just measure it out. Okay. I just want to point that out because everybody knows that, like to me, a, a wide, clear, nice path is great. But I also know that as soon as we cut one tree down, why didn't you do this? So I'm uh, uh, just for mere pointing out purposes. And then, then the trees are, whatever trees they cut would be an extra cost, but those should be pretty simple trees to cut. And I, I think the most important part is to have a wide path at this point. Um, and well, not I, have, I, I, have I, the roots coming up a year from now and buckling it again. So I can there's, get, there's technically a bike lane in one, it. I want to look at what the, uh, you know, what the regulations are on that, but uh, the width would seem to me if you're having traffic I, I other places when they put in bike lanes or walking paths sometimes they have wider ones that are divided you know where you have a, a two-way kind of thing where two uh, wheelchairs can go both yeah. directions but that would be that seems to me we don't have room well when if it's connecting to a path that's not as wide so you wanted to make it look as least obvious as possible but you know my thought, was, my thought was I would prefer it to come directly from the MI where it stops and ours like goes in. Right. I would just prefer it to be that thick all the way down, all the way to however wide that is. And Eric, I don't know if you remember if it was five, six or seven, but wherever that's that, that's that however wide that path is, that was perfect. It's not well, very wide, you know. Yeah, it definitely should just have uniformity, six. I would think. Mm -hmm. Right. Since it's just that, since it's just a connector, basically. I mean, I feel like that's, I feel like that's the way it needs to, that's my vision, I think, at that point. Well, this is what is envisioned for the new community center also, right? That this would coordinate into that. Yeah, this is not touched in the diagrams that we have. So this is something that, um, it, this wouldn't affect anything over there. So getting this project done does not affect anything. It's just a bonus. It'll already be done. Yeah. Well, my, yeah. No, what I'm saying is if we did the new community center, uh, then walkways are going to be taken into consideration. And yeah. this coordinates with that, right? Yes, it does. Okay. So what I will do, Brian, do you have any two cents on this? No. Are you excited to get it done? Uh, whatever. Yeah. Just get it done. I don't care which one you pick. Just yeah, they're, they're $500, I think. So, yeah. okay. I will have legislation for you guys on Monday. Um, we will go over, Eric and I can kind of uh, on Wednesday, go over both of them, fine tooth comb and, you know, just make sure that we're not missing something on one of them and just move forward with one. Yeah. I just, I, I always like the one that, that gives you more than you listen to you and give you more than you asked for. And, and that one was definitely took a lot of care in giving you different options. And I, I always think that's, a, I always think that's a good thing. Perfect. These are, I, I think the one that you're talking about is they're the ones that did the rest of the path. So it makes sense to just continue because everything should be the same quality of it. So mm -hmm. it would be, it's the same people that did that path. Yeah, that makes sense then. Just use the the ones yeah. that I assume Eric is referring to as the MI people because they're the ones that they used. And that way it, it will hopefully level up with the existing path perfectly. Makes sense to me. All right, uh, Councilperson McNamara, you had had something else you wanted to bring up? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, somewhat, I guess grossly related to our business as council. Um, this is the first time that I've ever had the chance to do this, seeing as my original, um, my original uh, point of being here was appointed. I, um, are there any tips or tricks on how to file for re-election that someone would not mind walking me through? Because I assume the deadline for that will be coming up sometime this spring. Yeah, in August or 
Yeah. They always, you go, okay. you go down on Marsh Road to the Board of Elections, they can fill you in on all of it. Well, you can you can do yes, and you can also there's a lot online you can look at to get to get you started. But the the people down at you know where you can vote early, David, on Morse Road. Yeah, yeah. If that's the board of if you go walk in there and say you want information and when they're having an odd busy day, they're very nice. Oh yes, they are. Basically, you just need to get ten registered voters to sign your petition. So all, right. all it takes. I'm not sure I could scrape up ten. <laughs> to file it. I am certain you can scrape up ten. That's ten is like I don't know. If you have trouble scraping up ten, just let me know. Bring your petition over here, and I can get it done in an evening. Exactly. Or show up to planning and zoning at the community building. You'll have yeah. almost ten people there. So there you go. One right, well, that'll that that is that that's appreciated. Thank you, guys. I will. Well, I mentioned to you, up. David, because you can drive to the board of elections just because of where it is. You know, as quick as you can call them on the phone. <laughs> they're very and, nice. And, and in my experience, they're more likely to talk to you there in person than on the phone. Yes, they, sir. Are, they are much harder to get on the phone than to walk in and talk. To oh them. yeah, I agree with that too. <laughs> All right. But, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, then, anybody else have anything else they wanted to bring up uh, while we're still in this work session? Go newsletter on. deadline, March 23rd, Diane. March 23rd for the newsletter. Um, if anybody has a, a, an article or, or a thought process about an article, or we, even if you have an idea, don't have a lot of time, you know, if you give me some notes, I could whip something up. But uh, for the newsletter, something coming up upcoming dates, anything like that that anybody has would be okay. awesome to put those in there. Small little boxes, uh, those always are nice to fit in different places. If you've got little notices, you want to do something like that, whatever. Okay. All right. Uh, Mayor Hughes, is there anything on the streets that I haven't got to yet that would be going in the newsletter? No. Um, I don't know. I know that there, I found out today there's two potholes. Somebody sent me a message on two potholes. So I'm gonna to talk to Brian about that because I really hate to bring somebody in for two potholes. So we'll talk about that. All right, thank you. But if you wanna meet like on Wednesday or Friday, we can do that I too. I couldn't do it today, so I'll have to Fine. do it today. Wednesday. Shoot me a message, shoot me a message and let me know what time, but I'll, I will be in Wednesday too. Okay, thank you. All right, well then uh, what I'm hearing is it's time to move to adjourn. Second. Second. Move to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Objections, abstains, all right.